Sometimes you want to drive something different, something beautiful, something fast, something astonishing. The McLaren 720S checks all of those something boxes. Really, to even approach the limits of this car, I'd have to take it out on a track on roads like this. It's like using a chainsaw to cut a stick of butter. Built in Britain to tame tarmac throughout the world, this mid-engine supercar draws out the best in a driver and eyeballs wherever it goes. If I had a dollar for every time this scenario played out, I could probably buy one. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Time for a splash of cold water. The 720S and its dihedral doors begins at $289,000. That does include shipping. You'll probably want a few options. This one goes for $342,000. Anybody for playing the lottery? Owners should be prepared to answer a lot of questions. Enthusiasts know McLaren, but John and Joan Q. Public are still a little unfamiliar. Here's what you can tell them about the 720S. While the doors still swing vertically like the 650, this is a different car with a different structure. McLaren calls the new carbon fiber architecture the Mono Cage 2 tub, though it's really more than just a tub because it now incorporates the A pillar, the roof spine, and the back structure. Do we have a photo of that? Ah, there we go. This is unique to the 720S. The carbon fiber makes for very thin, strong pillars. Aluminum alloys are also used throughout the chassis and for some of the body panels. Because of the new structure, the 720 has a lower sill, making it easier to get in and out of than the old 650. Though if I didn't admit that I practiced that move a dozen times, I'd be a liar. It seems McLaren designers were watching Shark Week when drawing up the 720 before switching to the Sci-Fi channel. This Mako cyborg has more gills than a genetic experiment gone wrong. Here, it's very right, since the standard carbon ceramic brakes and engine need a whole lot of cooling. I would love to show you the 4-liter V8 with two turbochargers, both of them twin scroll and electrically actuated, but the only way in is at a McLaren service center which happens to be about 120 miles from here. It delivers 710 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque, plus the car is light, weighing just over 2,800 pounds. That's something good. Appropriately, what you can see of the eight-cylinder is bathed in red light, as sinister as the sound. <laughs> A seven-speed dual-clutch transmission handles the cog swaps, there's manual control, but no manual transmission. The 720S is adjustable to suit your mood, the dampers can be relaxed or stiffened, switching the drive mode from comfort, past sport, to track does this, maximizing visibility and minimizing the gauges to the essentials so the pilot is not distracted. And Houston, uh, there is launch control. All right, want to see what zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds looks like? That looks pretty good, feels pretty good, sounds pretty good too, don't you think? 720S is a rear drive car. It doesn't seem to need all wheel drive. I'll assume kicking the tail out in controlled fashion on the track is made easier using the new drift control, where the electronic stability system sets the limit of oversteer, but you'd have to get past the tire's epic adhesion. Top speed is acclaimed 212 miles an hour. That is something I'm not going to attempt, but a friend of mine, auto writer Perry Stern, had this car on a closed section of Idaho Highway. Got it up to 209 miles an hour, and even though the pavement was rough, he said it was an awful lot of fun. I'm guessing the active aero kicked in for added downforce. Air brake deployment takes less than a half a second. Remember, this has fade-free carbon ceramic brakes. 60 to zero takes less than 100 feet. <clears throat> That's gonna leave a mark. McLaren brake steer improves control by applying the appropriate binder to reduce understeer or transfer power to the back tires on corner exit. 720S is not overly quiet, nor should it be. I like hearing the engine, and it's especially nice hearing it come from the back. Always a treat. 
Normally in supercars, visibility is awful. This one is actually very good, especially out the back, lots of glass. Serious drivers will want McLaren's track telemetry, available with three cameras. The software measures throttle angle, g-forces, speed, and time measurement. The data can be dissected down to sector times within a lap. I have the suspension in comfort mode, uh, comfort mode being in air quotes. It's not harsh, but it's hardly supple. It's appropriate for a car like this. The 720S does not get lofty fuel economy numbers. Uh, just ask my wallet. This shouldn't shock anyone. So what does a Chevy Cruze and a McLaren 720S have in common? Automatic engine start stop. Unlike the Chevy though, this one can be turned off easily. Those with a stable of cars might find the Porsche PDK transmission a little more snappy and telepathic. Can't see that as a deal breaker though. Buyers probably won't just waltz into a McLaren showroom and buy a 720S off the floor. Since this is something expensive, it practically demands bespoke action. McLaren says paint color choices are nearly infinite, the interior can be customized, and there's the ability to add enough carbon fiber trim to build a second chassis. This is the best looking cabin I've seen McLaren craft, though it's not quite as sumptuous as what you might find in a Ferrari. Remember, the doors mean there are no storage pockets since everything would just fall out when they open. There's precious little room for stuff, just some sunglasses, one usable drink holder, I don't know that this one really counts. I didn't even turn on the optional Harman Kardon sound system with an engine so musical. There's a backup camera, it's in the gauge cluster, and when you turn the wheel, it's perfectly blocked. Good thing this thing has good visibility. One option you'll want is the front lift kit, unless you like the scraped chin look. The deeply bolstered seats are firm, but my back and bum never took issue with that. As for the user interface, it's definitely a step in the right direction, and the orientation works well for navigation, but really, I've seen systems just as good or better in mainstream cars. And Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are something not available. I have two days with this car. I'm not wasting them heading off to Costco to fill the trunk full of bath tissue. But as you can see, it's not very big, is it? Throw in a carry-on size suitcase and small duffel bag and the tire repair kit and lithium ion battery charger still fit. There's a little more room behind the seats, but don't expect to carry golf clubs. This is a beautiful car, if you hadn't noticed. I spent way too much time circling it to explore the slots, curves, and grooves. Compared to Ferrari and Lamborghini, McLaren is a relatively young brand. Born from the company's racing efforts, the 720S is, well, quite something. Those with a taste for performance and the financial means get an added bonus when buying one, exclusivity even in the world of supercars. If you are the wealthy, practical type that likes to plan ahead, McLaren has an extended warranty program that can be bought when first purchasing the car in 12 or 24 month periods until the vehicle is 10 years old. So you can warranty a 720S for up to 12 years. Interesting, not sure that can even be done with a Camry. Hope you enjoyed my look at the McLaren 720S. Some days I do enjoy my job. You know, I always enjoy my job. I get to play with cars, cameras, fool around in editing. Who wouldn't like this job? Besides, if I complained, nobody would sympathize. That's Driven, I'm Tom Volk.